everybody, it's Gil here aboard the Sailing Vessel Dream Chaser, and I hope you guys have been enjoying the last couple of weeks' video series on some of the work we're doing on the power boat. So in this week's episode, we're actually going to go ahead and show how to change the oil in an inboard-outboard uh, Volvo Penta engine. Uh, you know, some of these are kind of basic items, but they're really good maintenance items to do, and I've learned a couple of tips and tricks over the years doing these things, so I thought I'd share them with you. If you didn't see last week's video, it was all about how to go about changing the impeller on one of these Volvo Penta motors, and I'll put a link to it right up here if you're watching on a mobile device. If not, down below in the description, I'll put a link there. So before we get started, let me go get a couple of my supplies. Uh, I took an empty milk jug here and a little uh, old soda bottle so I can put the oil into that as I extract it out of the engine. Uh, make sure we keep everything nice and neat and clean. Um, and look, to be perfectly candid, I need a cup of coffee. It's still morning time. So let's get this cover off and we'll get started. And I just saw a big old like Jack crevasse or something swim by. It had to be 18 to 24 inches long. It was pretty cool. It was just swimming in like three and a half, four feet of water right here next to the bulkhead. You know, it darted out and then it went deeper. I couldn't see it anymore. <laughs> got the boat uncovered and you saw me just try to dry fit these little cup holders I picked up yesterday that uh, go in the top of this little table. The old ones had cracked out through just, you know, being dry in the sun. Anyway, as I mentioned, we're going to go ahead and change the oil on this engine. And I thought what I'd do is before we get started, let me um, put the camera in the engine room and kind of orient you with where things are in here. Model number, dipstick, oil fill, pump out location, and oil filter as well. So we'll go ahead and get that video going right now. Oh, got some fishermen behind. It's cool. I thought we'd start with getting oriented here. This is a 2004 27-foot uh, Chaparral Senesta boat. It has an inboard-outboard Volvo Penta motor on it, and I just opened up the engine compartment, and I'll kind of show you uh, model number and locations of some of the key items here. So let's start with the model number itself, and as you can see, it's a Volvo Penta 5.7 liter GI-E. That's the electronic ignition version. And then as we look at a couple of other key things here, you can see right here we have our oil dipstick, as well as an oil fill cap. You notice it's got that brown set of threads right there. That's actually to be able to connect an oil pump right to, and actually pump the oil right through the dipstick uh, opening. And then if we come around the side of it here, you can see we have our oil filter right here in this location. Now, I'll talk about this in a little bit more detail in a few moments, but I'm going to use a larger oil filter. Same size canister diameter fit, but it uh, holds a full quart of oil. Figure the more filtration, the better. I'm going to start pretty simply with just removing the oil dipstick. And I just checked the oil on this the other day. It is amazing to me just how golden brown that is. The oil filter says it's been replaced in 17, so in really nice shape. I'm going to just set this right here out of the way. And I bought this little cheap pump. Um, there's all kinds of different style ones you can get. Even some you can pump up and create a vacuum and they automatically go. But this one, what I'm going to do is it has this small hole right here on the bottom. And it looks like it'll actually fit right on top of the tube. I don't have the Volvo one that has this attachment on it. So we're just going to go ahead and use that. There we go. All right. So I've got that on there real good. It's created a nice seal. And I'll be able to just pump that oil right out of there in a moment. 
So now that I know that fits, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the dipstick back in. I'm going to run the engine for a few minutes just to get it up warm. It'll make it a lot easier for that, uh, that uh, more liquefied oil to pump out. All right, so I've just finished running the motor for a while. I'm going to pull the dipstick out, hook my pump up, and we'll start extracting some of this oil. I'm going to open up the oil fill here as well, just to allow it to uh, flow a little easier. This thing actually makes pretty good progress. Well, you can see it from this angle. With all the oil sucked out, it was now time to concentrate on removing the oil filter. To avoid any spills, I always use a plastic bag, and in this case I have one just slightly bigger than the canister itself. I slid it up around the canister with a little bit of extra crumpled right up along the top, and sorry it's out of the camera view here. Then when I unscrewed it, as soon as I did, I just had to grab the lip of the actual bag, and then you see me holding that bag and letting the filter kind of slide down into it. You'll also notice I put a rag right down here to catch any drips that might have fallen as well. Rub a little bit of oil around the seal of this. You can see I'm going in with a taller one, just because I have the room for it. So why not, you know? And I'm gonna need a longer funnel than the one I have, so I will come back and put the oil in in a little bit. It might have been hard to see we using the camera that I had down in the engine room, but the shape of the exhaust risers on this engine um, means that there's a pretty small area to get the funnel down into, into the fill. And I could probably use my little shallow funnel that only sticks up maybe three inches and pour from above the riser and likely I would get everything into the, uh, into the engine fill hole there, but I just don't want to chance it. That engine compartment is so clean and neat and you saw as I was pulling out with the suction, um, I made sure that any drips that got on there, you know, I cleaned them up right away. And the last thing I want to do is have the funnel tip or you know get a teaspoon or a tablespoon of oil down the side of the engine so i'm just going to shut everything up for a little bit uh, we're going out to grab lunch while i'm out i'm going to go ahead and grab one of those tall narrow funnels so it'll put the opening of the funnel above the riser and then i'll just keep it down on the boat in the little tool area down there that way i don't have to worry about you know spilling anytime i'm changing the oil with this thing I think we did pretty good using that cheap little pump uh, right at the dipstick to get the oil out. Uh, this engine holds five and a quarter quarts of oil when it's empty. So you saw I grabbed almost that entire gallon. So let's call that four quarts. It might have been just shy of it. Uh, I probably had about maybe three quarters of a quart in the... Um, in, in the actual filter itself. So if you consider that, I got four and a half quarts out of there. Um, you know, yeah, four and a half, let's say. Uh, maybe four and three quarters, which means you know, that, that's pretty good on, on a five and a quarter engine when you're pulling it out with suction only that looked pretty good and the oil wasn't too bad while it was black compared to the very golden look on the dipstick uh, it was still still in pretty good shape so I feel really good about the amount of oil we got out I'm not worried about getting a hundred percent of it out it would be great to do that but I think the reality is on most boats you don't if you get 80 to 90 percent out you're doing good I just came back with a couple of longer funnels and this will help me with what we need to do back here. So it's really just a matter at this point of filling up the oil. Let's hop in there and do it. I mentioned earlier in the video that this engine holds about five and a quarter quarts of oil when it's full. And it dawned on me that those specifications would be based on the standard size oil filter that the Volvo Penta uh, manufacturer recommends. As I mentioned, I was going ahead and getting um, an oil filter that was twice as tall, so essentially twice the filtration. It also means it holds that much more oil. Um, the old one holds about a third of a quart, this one holds a full quart, so I need to assume that I'm going to have to put about a half quart more than the standard specifications call for this engine. 
So I will test that out as I fill up the engine, um, start it up, let it run for a little bit, check the oil level, and I'll make sure everything looks good before we call it a day. But it'll be interesting to see exactly how much, uh, how much we need. I have six total cords here today. Let me go ahead and open up this oil fill here. Uh, forgive the brightness of the sun. It's, it's late in the day, a lot later than we thought we'd get back. <laughs> I want to get this done before it gets dark. And I'm going to stop right there. I'm at four and a half quarts. Um, that way we'll see if I have uh, enough in there or not. Um, remember, I think some stayed down in the bottom of the engine, uh, the engine oil pan a little bit too. So I was able to fill it up the rest of the way with oil. I started up the motor. It's interesting. It's always nerve wracking, right? When you do that, because that oil is not circulated through yet, the oil pressure stayed at zero for about five or six seconds. And then it clopped, popped back up again to its normal range. But you know, those are a tense few seconds every time you want to make sure everything worked. turns out I was just a tiny, tiny bit high on the oil level, even after doing that. So I put in four and a half quarts. It takes five and a half or five and a quarter. Let's call it five and a half to five and three quarters with the, um, larger oil filter canister on there. So in the end, I'm likely, um, I likely had three quarters of a quart or so that was still left down in the oil pan. And again, like I said earlier, I think that's perfectly acceptable. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful in our Volvo Penta general maintenance series. If you did, great, do us a favor, go ahead and click the little thumbs up and the bell notification. You get notified of new videos as we upload them. If you're new to our channel, I'll share with you that historically it's been all about our liveaboard lifestyle on our 51 foot classic sailboat. We have since moved into a house and the boat is still a few states away. We're just looking for a nice weather window just after the first of the year and we'll sail that boat back here and be able to keep it right here in the backyard behind the house. Normally that's what our videos were, but as we've been in the house, I've been looking for other sort of content, still boat related where I can, sometimes not. But I hope you've enjoyed this power boat series just while we've been using our little runabout here uh, in the absence of our sailboat. Thanks everybody for watching. From Gil, Deb, and the Grand Squids aboard Sailing Vessel Dream Chaser or the Chaparral or in, you know, Casa de la Dreaming. <laughs> I made that up. Uh, I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Thanks for watching. See you next Friday.